Hey everybody, this is Peter Hafner, Certified Financial Planner and Certified Financial Fiduciary. And today I want to bring you a video talking about uh, the banking issues that have been going on with Silicon Valley and some of the other ones. Uh, and I want to specifically relate it to your investments, especially for my clients who are either retired or about to retire and for all you other people out there in the same situation. Because uh, this is what's really important, right? It's not what's going on in the world, it's how it affects us how it might get in the way of where we want to go and what we want to do. So I'm just going to spend a little bit of time on the banking situation. And by the way, when I'm creating this video, it's Tuesday, uh, March 21st, the morning of Tuesday, March 21st. Let me start with this too. One of the things we were all really, really aware of is inflation has been really high. And as you all know, the Fed has been trying to they haven't been trying, they have been raising interest rates. In fact, they've been raising interest rates at the most aggressive rate in many, many, many years. And what you may not know is often when the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates, they raise rates until something breaks. And that's what happened with Silicon Valley Bank a couple of weeks ago. Silicon Valley Bank, they are one of the go-to financial institutions for venture capital companies. Um, they're located in San Francisco uh, in Silicon Valley. It's right in the name, right? So they got a lot of money coming in from Silicon Valley. And another thing you may not be aware of, but during COVID, a lot of sectors did really, really poorly, like hospitality, my God, really, really bad. But technology did great, right? Zoom, Netflix, Microsoft, Intel, all these companies did, they just had a fantastic time throughout COVID. And as a result, Silicon Valley Bank took in huge amounts of deposits huge amounts of deposits. And many of the deposits were well above the FDIC guaranteed amount. So this was all well and good, but what a bank normally does when they're taking in these deposits is they then lend them out. So they'll lend them to Mrs. Jones so she can buy a car and they'll lend them to Mrs. Smith so she can get a mortgage on a house. And these loans are relatively safe loans. And this is good. But what happened with SVB Bank is the money was coming in so fast and so furious, and there was just so much of it, they weren't able to uh, offload the deposits in safer loans that would create an income stream for them. It was just coming too fast. So what they did is they invested the money in safe investments, okay? They bought treasury bonds, and tre there's, there's almost nothing on earth that is as conservative as a US government treasury bond. But what they did is they bought the long-term treasury bonds because they had the highest yield. And uh, you know, yields have been going up now, but yields weren't that high when we go back to the beginning of COVID. So they were trying to get the highest yield they could. They were putting it into these long-term bonds. And then, you know what happened? This is where we started. The Fed has been raising interest rates. And as interest rates go up, do you know what happens to bond values? Bonds go down and bonds had one of their worst years on record last year in 22. And this is a problem for a bank because banks are required. Banks need to have a certain amount of capital on hand in case, in case people want to take money out of the bank, especially if they want to take big amounts out of the bank. So people started to get wind that this bank was trying to maneuver to create more capital so that they would have the ability to meet uh, uh, requests for disbursements out of the bank. And as they heard that in this new day and age where everyone is electronically connected through Twitter and Facebook and whatnot, it spread like that. And people were starting to say, oh my God, this bank, they're not gonna be able to cover your uh, withdrawals. You better get your money out now. And that led to a run on the bank, just like in A Wonderful Life or just like in Mary Poppins, okay? So I don't want to spend too much time on this. This caused a problem over the weekend, that weekend, two weeks ago, the government stepped in. And, uh, you know, people have different opinions on this, but what they did is they backstopped the bank. Um, they didn't bail out the bank like they bailed out the banks during the financial crisis. They didn't save the shareholders of the banks. But what they did do is they made sure that the depositors were going to be solvent, even if they had above the FDIC guaranteed amounts. So 
long and the short of this, this has led to a very volatile time in the stock markets and in your investment portfolios. And that's what I really want to talk to you about today. Because there's a saying about problems. You're either in a problem, just left a problem, or on your way to a problem, right? It's the same way with bad times in the stock market and difficult times with your investments. You know, you're either in a bear market, just left a bear market, or on your way to a bear market, or a difficult time in the market. And uh, last year was a bad time in the market. And pretty much the consensus seemed to be that this year was going to be a lot better. Yes, there might be a recession, but it should be shallow and short, which would be great. So all the focus in the last couple of weeks has been on this banking crisis. I've been on innumerable conference calls with, uh, with BlackRock, listening to their experts talk about what's going on with SVB, what's going on with Credit Suisse, and uh, these kinds of things. How is this going to affect the equity markets, the stock markets? So it is affecting it. The stock market had a really good run going into the new year. It started turning around somewhere in November, December of last year. And January was great, but we've given a lot of that back uh, where we are now, March 21st of 2023. But this is the thing, okay? If you are one of my clients, I want you to know that you do not need to worry. If you are one of my clients where we've done the financial planning, the retirement planning for you, we are using our three bucket investment strategy. And here, let me share my screen with you. I just want to remind you how this works and why we do this, because it's particularly important when the stock market's not doing well. And what we do is we use a three bucket approach. And what we're doing with this approach is we're putting specific types of investments into these separate buckets and each of these buckets serves a different purpose creates income or growth for a specific amount of time so we've got the three buckets now soon and later and our now bucket is guaranteed investments okay no risk now sometimes people complain because they're not getting much interest or growth on that investment and i say yeah that's right and that's the way it's going to be because the now bucket, the purpose is not to create growth for your portfolio. We're using other buckets to do that for you. The now bucket, what we're doing there is we're covering six to 12 months of the income you need that has now replaced your working income. What do I mean by that? Well, from the now bucket, what we're doing is we're sending money to your bank every month. And these deposits to your bank have replaced the income you used to get when you were working. So we keep enough money in the now bucket to be able to put money in your bank account for the next six to 12 months so that you can cover your living expenses so you can do the things you wanna do, okay? But anyone see a problem with the now bucket? Yeah, the now bucket's gonna run out of money in six to 12 months. So the question is, what do we do then? And that's where our next bucket comes in, the soon bucket. The soon bucket is for money we're gonna need sooner rather than later. And what we wanna do with the soon bucket is we wanna have enough money to cover the next three, five, or maybe seven or 10 years. Uh, and what I mean by that is we wanna be able to refill the now bucket from the soon bucket when the now bucket gets low. And in order to do that, we've got to have some measure of protection from stock market volatility, because when the stock market's down, we don't want to be selling things. So in our soon bucket, we're going to have low volatility investments. And that's what we've done for you. Um, but most importantly, with the soon bucket, what we want to do is we want to provide enough time to refill the now bucket to give the stock market time to recover and start doing well again. we The soon bucket protects us from the stock market so we can refill our now bucket and keep on putting those deposits in the bank. That's what we're doing for all you folks where we've created these retirement plans and we're managing your investments. Now, last bucket is the later bucket. Later bucket is for growth. Great later bucket will experience more volatility. Later bucket is where the investments are that are having the most, uh, 
the most downside right now as the market works through, as the economy works through these uh, challenges to the banking sector, okay? But because we got enough money in the soon bucket to keep filling the now bucket, we have put time back on our side, even though we're older and retired or nearly retired, we put time back on our side, just like when we were young. Think about when you were in your 20s. Think about your kids. Think about when you were in your 30s. It didn't really matter if the stock market was up or down, right? Might not have been comfortable, but you just kept contributing to your 401k, okay? And having the later bucket with the soon bucket puts time back on our side. So we've got plenty of time to let the stock market do what it's gonna do. You know, I was hoping that by this point this year, the stock market was going to be doing better than it is. Uh, but that's the thing with the stock market. You can never really know what's coming next. But if we're using a strategy like this three bucket bucket strategy, you can put time back on your side so that you can protect yourself from the stock market. So again, the soon bucket protects you from the stock market. And what the later bucket does is it protects you from inflation. And the reason it protects you from inflation is because it is the growth engine of your investment portfolio. And what we can do is a couple of years from now or 12 months from now, whenever the stock market's doing really, really good again, what we'll be able to do is refill our soon bucket. And it's by balancing these buckets that we're able to put you in a situation where you really don't have to worry about the stock market volatility. You don't have to worry about it because you've got a plan. You've got your income, your current income coming from the now bucket. We're able to refill your now bucket for the next three, five or seven years, depending on the customized plan we made for you. And that gives us time to wait for the stock market to, to get to a point where we can start topping off the soon bucket again. So there's a lot more I could say about this, but I wanna keep these videos short. If you've got further questions, let us know. I'm always looking for topics for, uh, for new videos. If you're a client of ours and you want to schedule a meeting to come in and review things, please let us know. And uh, if you find these videos useful and informative, please subscribe. Please click the bell so that you're alerted when we put out new content. Feel free to share them with your friends and your relatives. And most importantly, I just want to thank you for joining me today. Hope you have a great day. I look forward to seeing you next time. So long.